As the word substitution suggests, there needs to be two species involved so that each of them can exchange parts or substitute a part of each other. One of the species involved needs to produce the free radical, which is typically a group 17 halogen molecule such as chlorine. And if you've been paying attention, the other species needs to be an alkane. From this equation, you can see that a hydrogen atom in the alkane has been swapped out or substituted with a chlorine atom from the chlorine molecule, likewise creating a byproduct as a result. While it may look like a simple one-liner reaction, free radical substitution actually involves a chain reaction consisting of three main steps. Imagine this, there are a lot of methane and chlorine molecules in the air. What will first happen is that the ultraviolet light from the sun will provide the energy to break the bond between the chlorine molecules in a process called homolytic fission. As the covalent bond consists of two electrons, homolytic fission will cause each shared electron in the bond to be split mutually between the two chlorine atoms, forming two chlorine radicals and we use half arrows to represent the movement of these single unpaired electrons. The CH and CC covalent bonds in the methane or the other surrounding alkane molecules are not broken as the energy from the UV light is not strong enough to break the stronger bond energy values that they have. The chlorine radicals formed are extremely reactive because of their unpaired electron. Hence, this causes them to collide with the methane molecules around them and abstract one of their hydrogen atoms. Since the CH covalent bond consists of two shared electrons, what happens is that the electron from the hydrogen will join with the unpaired electron of the chlorine radical to form a stable covalent HCl bond, while the remaining unpaired electron of the CH bond will return to the central carbon atom, forming yet another highly reactive radical. Next, the methyl radical will react with a stable chlorine molecule, abstracting a chlorine atom in the same way like this forming a chloromethane and regenerating the chlorine radical. This chlorine radical can then react with another methane molecule and the whole propagation process is repeated infinitely. That's why free radical substitution is also known as a chain reaction. However, there is a way to break this seemingly infinite loop, which leads us to the next and final step. So, if we were to examine carefully, the reason why the chain reaction goes on and on is because of the formation of the highly reactive free radicals at the end of every single step. So, if we were to eliminate the culprit, which is the presence of the radicals, the chain reaction will not continue. Hence, to terminate the process, we will just need to remove all the free radicals by combining two free radicals. Because the two unpaired electrons will form a stable covalent bond, rendering the newly formed molecule to be stable and much less reactive. This can happen between any two radicals of any type and combination as the main goal is to just remove any free radicals from the system. So to summarize, step 1 involves bond breaking of the CLCL bond in the presence of UV light. Step 2 involves both bond breaking and bond formation, producing free radicals that continue the chain reaction. Step 3 involves the termination of the chain reaction by bond forming between any two radicals.